You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show. Uh, I'm Mark Wiltshire, joined today by Keke Mulleri. Hi, Keke. Terve, terve. Just the two of us today. We we realised the other day that there's a lot of football still left in the Finnish season. Even though Bakehouse League is coming to an end, there's kind of regular action all the way through to the beginning of December. So we're going to try and become a little bit more... Uh, timely get some stuff out more regularly but that may mean there's just one or one or two of us together talking through what's going on so we today are going to have a very quick look at the recent Veikkaus Liga games as the Mesterus and Hastaya series both got underway the first first round of games after the season has split um, so we'll take a quick look at those and then we're going to preview the inaugural Women's Nations League um We've been quite positive and excited, I think, in the past about the effect it's had for the men's team. So we'll we'll take a look at the at the women's competition, give you a bit of an overview, um, look at how these qualifying campaigns for this and other women's competitions have now all kind of aligned. I think quite a smart smart way. We'll have a look at the Finland squad selection, um, the upcoming opponents of Finland, which is Slovakia, Romania, and Croatia. We'll have a look at the recent form and consider the Helmerich chances of gaining promotion from this Nations League group. So I reckon, Keke, that's that's enough to keep us busy for a while. Yeah, mate. Referees ready? Let's get underway. So I I wanted to just do a quick run through of the of the scores. So in the in the Mr. Saria, we had Hoyi Core two. FC Inter nil, Asi Core one, Honka two, Cups nil, VPS two, and I could see Keke there. He was he was getting all reminiscent of listening to the the classified results. I haven't practiced that. I have nothing That's like it. Alexander Armstrong. Was it back in the day? Um, but the numbers were right. So what that what that means in this Mester of Saria, the top six teams is that Hoi Core are sitting top with 47 points Coops a second with 43 points uh, Verpes Vaza are third with 39 points then it's Honka fourth on 38 just above Asiko on also on 38 but in fifth place and then sixth is Inter with 34 points and it was a tough watch last weekend I think now Asiko have won one of their last eight games uh, and that was against Mariaham where we got a winner in the in the final <laughs> minute it's tough and the first half of that game the other day was not an easy watch we were also without Oscari our capo for the first half so it was quite difficult getting the uh getting the fans going he got there at half time and he was full of beans and and revved everyone up for a little while I said to him, it's very easy to be that lively when you haven't sat through the first half that we've just watched. <laughs> yeah. um, but what, what was telling, I think, was after the game, the Honka manager said, yeah, we knew what Asikor were going to do and we were able to counter it. And suggesting that there was only one way that they were going to play. And and that is kind of what we what we saw. Um, Hoyikor got a perhaps routine win 2-0 yep. against Inter. Um, let's just take a minute, Keke, and uh, and hear from Ali. He's not with us today, but he, he recorded a quick voice note. Moi, Kaiki. It's your resident Hoyakor favourite here. Just with a little comment on all things going on for the reigning champions this week. The weekend saw a comfortable 2-0 win over Inter Torku, with goals from Hassani Bande and Boyan Radulovic in the 71st and 81st minute, respectively. The first goal, I mean, if you haven't seen it, you really should check it out on YouTube, was, in all honesty, as 
calamitous as it was hilarious. Bande was through in on goal, in which the keeper Hutenen saved it into the path of the Toku and New Zealand defender Nico Boxall, who in turn tried to, uh, well, I guess he tried to clear the ball, but only managed to hit Bande and rebounded it into the net. You'll either laugh or cry, depending on your allegiance. The second goal was a bit more simple, uh, a simple tap in from a corner from the prolific Boyan Radulovic, who scored his 16th league goal of the season to, I don't know, maybe finally kill the argument that Hoy Accord don't have anyone that can score. Attention now turns to Thursday when they welcome Greek side Pauk in the Europa Conference League in what promises to be the first of three sellout home matches in Europe this season. I'll be there to cheer the boys on. I've said Hoyakor can realistically maybe get well, perhaps at least four points from their home games during the European campaign. So let's see if they can get some points on the board starting from Thursday. Kitos and speak to you all soon. OK, thanks. Thanks for that, Ali. And uh, we'll see you hopefully on the next episode. Looking down at the Harstaya Saria, these are the bottom six teams. We saw FC Hucker 2, Ilves 2, Lati 2, Kortepe 1, and Arce Oulu 3, EFK Mariaham 2. And that leaves the bottom of the half of the table looking like this. In seventh place is Oulu on 34 points. They've opened up a bit of a gap now over Hucker yep. on 25 points, also <clears throat> Lati on 25 points. Uh, in 10th place is Ilves on 21, Cortepe on 20, and then at the bottom, where they've been most of the season, to be fair, is Mariaham on 15 points. Um, any, any apart from this gap that's, that's sort of opened up there, Keke, any, anything else catch your eye there in that bottom half of the table? I mean, um, no, you mentioned the gap, and I think um, I say Ola were, were unlucky to sort of drop into the he, um, drop into the bottom half of the table. They had some really good form at, at, uh, throughout the first part of the season, and um, and we thought, you know, they they might be the ones to um, to shake up the top a little bit. But yeah, the the real the real story of the season has got to be VPS, really. I mean, um, amazing two 0 win over over Coops on uh, on Sunday then, and um, and yeah, like no matter what happens, no matter who wins the championship, I. I really do think that the story of the season will be VPS, and um, yeah, hopefully we can we can get in touch with one of the VPS fans and get them on the show to give us a rundown of how it's been over there. With you know, following following them this year, so well, that's been now, the story there. But yeah, I would say now we've got a, a kind of schedule for the next couple of months of when we're going to be recording. It should be easier to get a few people yeah. on and give them a bit of warning, eh? Indeed, yeah. I mean, then yeah, you know, if uh, if anyone else is listening and wants to come on and, and tell us about about their club and how they've been following this fake house league season, we're um, we're all ears. But yeah, I mean, as you said, I say all oh, mate. I, I I felt a bit bit bad for them when they slipped into the into the bottom half because they'd been they'd been doing all right earlier. It in the was season, basically but... the last week of the of the regular season, wasn't yeah. it? Mm. But um, uh. but yeah, as you say, and as as Ali mentioned there, you know, um, Hoyi Cor scoring goals. Um, yeah, pretty routine win over a pretty lacklustre inter Turku side. I don't think they've really set the world on fire this season. Mm. But um, but yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's as I said, you know, fair pair, fair play to them. It's been been fantastic. Record it, record run of results, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's eleven wins now on the on the bounce. And uh, if they'd only started that run a couple of games earlier, they'd be they'd be seriously tra- challenging at the top. I think they're gonna probably best chance they've got is coming second but obviously they've still got to play Hoy Igor and uh, there's a lot of football to be played well there's four games to be played but there's a lot that can be decided in those in those four games I see I mean they've got um, they've got the uh, Nigerian I think yeah Nigerian centre forward Peter Michaels chipped in with 12 goals which is um, second on the on the Bakehouse League of top scorer table um, yeah uh, uh, still a few behind Radulovic but um but yeah, Ashley Coffey actually from AC Olu is also on twelve. Mm. So, so yeah, they, that tells you about their earlier form. But yeah, Vapers, mate, it's um, fair play to them. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to see, good to see a, a new face up there, isn't it? 
Uh, well, I wouldn't mind it being like ah. <laughs> <laughs> anyone but anyone be. but Pepsu. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to this this uh, getting this guy on and having a having a chat. I think that yeah, you over just the can't years, wait I've... for this season to be over. No, I, I you know what I I couldn't I, let let's re- regroup and rebuild for for next year because I'm I'm not feeling that confident for the rest of this season. And uh, I, I've given plenty of little sly digs to Vaza over the years, so I'm quite happy <laughs> to get this guy on and let him let him glory in what they've what they've been doing, but. I reckon that's probably enough. Vakers Liga. There was only one one round of games, and uh, each each time we come together, we'll we'll give you a bit of an update where where things yep. currently currently stand. But let's look at this Nations League campaign. I said at the at the beginning that we've been really positive about the Nations League for the men's teams. I think they've played it twice now, three times maybe, um, and it's Finland's development and progress as a team has coincided with the the start of the nation's league so i think it's uh, it's been very positive um this is the first time for the women and finland is in group b2 where uh, with um with romania slovakia and croatia and it works much the same as the men's competition there are leagues three leagues a b and c and then within each league there are four groups of four teams and each group winner will get promoted each group loser will get relegated until you start getting down towards uh, league c and then it all gets a little bit more complicated but that's what finland is basically playing for win the group get promoted into the top league and continue to progress First, first games are played this weekend. Maybe, maybe Keke, before we look at the opponents and what we think from uh, of, of Finland's chances, you can look at the. You could talk us through the Helmerit squad. Um, the listener and viewer will have noticed the the, the squad picture that I've uh, borrowed for our artwork, yep. um, and I've also put a copy of that in the in the show notes. So wherever you're listening or watching, if you see the link below to the. Uh, the blog with all the notes and links that's that's where you'll see that as well um but keke talk us through a little bit through the team and and any significant ins and outs and and players to watch out for i guess yeah i mean we've um, we've chatted last time we spoke about the helmerich squad we um we noted that there was uh, quite a few youngsters who had, who had made the cut and it's much the same it's um you've obviously got got a fair amount of experience as well but yeah it's it is quite Quite a young squad, I would have said. Um, if I just, you know, run through from the top, we've got Tinja Rico Corpola, who's um, now at AS Roma in Italy after uh, exploits with Tottenham Hotspur in the WSL. Um, she's in there. And the other two keepers are Anna Taminen, who's having an absolutely fantastic season in, in Sweden with Hamabu. Um, yeah, clean sheets all around. So Anna Taminen is there. And then Mila Mai Mayasari, who also plays in Sweden for... Uh, e or Uppsala. So uh, that's the keepers. Then we've got Natalia Kuika, Kuika um, from Portland Thorns in, in America. Uh, Johanna Tunila, she's recently moved to SK Brand in, in Norway. Um, she's in the squad. Uh, Anna Tamanen's teammate, Johanna, sorry, Anna, Anna Tamanen's teammate, Ava Newstrom, who's been forming that partnership with, um, with Anna Tamanen there at Hamabu. And um, playing her part in these uh, these clean sheets. She also recorded herself a, a goal at the weekend with a with a penalty kick. So um so yeah she's uh, she's bouncing and and making her way into the squad. Ellie Pikuyamsa who's at racing Louisville in America. Uh and then we've got first of the Siren twin I think they're twins, are they twins? First of the Siren yeah, twins, Emmy Siren, Emmy Siren in uh, from Coops. Um our mate Emma Koivista, who's still at Liverpool. Um, she's been, uh, yeah, been at Brighton previously, and now now at Liverpool FC. So, I mean, um, absolutely, club of amazing stature. So, yeah, good to see Emma, Nora Herob of Sampdoria. She's played for a couple of clubs in Italy, but now she's at Sampdoria. Um, she's a, a regular into the squad. So, yeah, look good to see her there. Pia Peltonen from Fortuna, uh, Hering, um, Nea Lettola from Brunby. 
Annie Hartikainen of Cups as well. And then we've got Emma Helkurinen from um, KIF Örebro uh, in Sweden in the Damo Svenskan. Katarina Kossola, who's an absolutely cracking player from BK Hacken. And then we've got Evelina Summanen, who everyone will be familiar with. She's at Spurs now. Um, she joined when Tinny was still there. But yeah, obviously Tinny's moved on to, to Italy, but um, Evelina's still there. Then we've got the second of the Syrian sisters, Una, who's at um, Cups. And then uh, Evelina's new teammate, Olga Artinen. She's recently signed for Tottenham in the WSL. So, um, yeah, I mean, she's a, she's an absolute regular in the squad. squad um, yeah, baller, really. You know, she's, she's a fantastic player. So it'll be interesting to see how she gets on in the WSL. And then we've got um, Ria Erling from FC Rosengård in, in Finland. Sw uh, sorry, Sweden, Swedish champion. Emmy Allenin of Kristen Sad's DFF. Sunny Franci, who's at Real Sociedad in Spain. Linda Salstrom, record goal scorer. You're not going into any competition without Linda, so uh, she's in the squad. Jutta Rantala, who's uh, another player who's recently joined the WSL. She's, um, she's signed for Leicester City in England, so that'll be um, interesting to see how she gets on. Heidi Kollanen of uh, KIF Orva again. And then um, young Una Sevenius, who's on loan at um, Como, uh, FC Como women's team, uh, on loan from AC Milan. And that's your uh, Helmerich squad. Very good, Keke. I, I love the way you're going from Finnish pronunciations to all these other other countries' pronunciations seamlessly. Yeah. Beautiful. Good work. I love that. that. <laughs> seamlessly. Uh, Una Sevenius is... Um, has, has got things pretty much sorted, isn't she? She's a, an AC Milan player, but she's playing on the banks of Lake Como. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, yeah, Where did she, it all uh, go wrong for her? Exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, she uh, she scored after coming on. She was on the pitch about 10 seconds, I think. The other, um, when was it? Yesterday or the day before? Yes. She, yeah, uh, yeah came, on a, came on as a sub, was um, subbed on, had about three touches and ball was in the back of the net and yeah she quite rightfully uh went bananas to celebrate her goal for como so um... as, as did the commentator that that was a really really uh excitable <laughs> yeah. italian italian commentary um yeah so, you, you, uh... you said you said about the squad that that we talked before about them being young you mean during the the rest of this year when there's been sort of friendly games going on we've seen this yes progression or this uh evolution of, of players coming through Exactly that, yeah. I mean, there's been a bit of a. Obviously, we had a, we had a change of coach. Um, Anna Signal departed after the after the Euros, and yeah, there's been. Um, I mean, I don't think it's been too drastic, but there has been some sort of turnover of players. I mean, um, there are a few notable absentees from the squad. I mean, um, two that stand out for me, and I. And I, I I believe I may have even mentioned them the last time that a Helmerich squad was announced, but you've got uh, no Yenu Danielson. She's um, she's back in Sweden now, having left Glasgow Rangers. Uh, she, had, she had a decent time for a, a, a one season at Rangers. They um, they missed out on the championship, um, but uh, but yeah, she uh, she she chipped in. She did really well. But yeah, there's there's no place for her. And um, also Amanda Rantanen, who. Um, we had really, really high hopes for internationally after she sort of burst on the scene. Um, yeah, she's uh, she's in, she's in Sweden as well, playing um, playing her football in Sweden. But um, yeah, they they they're two absentees that I mean I know it's a squad and someone's always gonna always gonna miss out. But it's um, those two do sort of stick out for me. It's a it's a real shame that they're not included. Yeah, but it's interesting also to note then that. There's clearly some strength in depth, not just within the squad, but pressure from the outside to keep everyone on their toes as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, everyone says that the competition for places is what what drives players and what you know drives them to to be better. And I'm sure those those two and others that I've mentioned that I haven't mentioned will um, will be trying to get back into into the next squad. So yeah, it's a it's down to them, and Salaranta will have to have a look and see see what he thinks next time. But um, but yeah, yes, it's, it's it's for me, it's a it is a strong looking squad. You've got that experience, and you've also got um, 
got got that sprinkling of youth and enthusiasm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm sure it'll be uh sure it'll be a great camp. I mean the, the girls have been out and about in Turku today. They've had a fans meet and greet and some of the um some of the pictures that came out of there look really good. There's all, obviously there's all plenty of smiles on their faces. So um so yeah, so I I, I mean we spoke to a, a few of these girls over the years and um, and they've always said that meeting up with this this Helmerich squad is is fantastic. They always have they always have good fun. They always, you know, put wear their hearts on their sleeves and give it 110 percent So uh, see so yeah, I'm I'm sure this time won't be any different. Let's have a look at the opponents in a little more detail. If we were talking about this before the show that you know we don't know all the all the <laughs> Hundred hundreds of uh, women's national teams in great depth, but we've had a little had a little dig around. So um, Finland are ranked twenty nine. Were they Keke a seeded top in their group? I guess they maybe were from yeah their, uh, from their ranking. Yeah, you're right there. I mean, they they, they they're sort of yeah twenty eight twenty nine fit in the FIFA ranking sandwich between Wales and. Czech, I think it is, and Czech Republic, but but yeah, when when you do look at the FIFA rankings, I mean, Romania and Slovenia are, are sort of 10, 10 or twelve places further down the rankings than than Finland. So, um, uh, yeah, Slovakia I mean, I, this this time, sorry, okay, Slovakia. I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, it's all right. Easy easy mistake to make. Jeez, yeah, I, I've got Slovenia on the brain because I'm off there. So, but um, but yeah, fo- it, fo- focus it, on this one there. You can you can have indeed. your Slovenia moment later. <laughs> Yeah, but in answer to your question, yeah, I think you know Finland would have been the um, the top side in, in in this group, mate. So yeah, I mean we've like you like you said we've we've had a little butchers at the um, at the recent form, and yeah, su- su- well, surprisingly or not surprisingly or coincidentally, we've we've come up, we've come up against both of these sides. Well, um, the two the two that we're going to play first, uh, not in the not too past, not too distant past, haven't we? Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, in fact, we played all of them this year, which I, I we follow them at the time. But my my life is twelve months of football, either following in the UK or Finland. So it all <laughs> after a while, there's no break and there's no time it to really. It. it really does, yeah. Um, so Finland are ranked twenty nine, Romania thirty. Uh, sorry, Finland ranked twenty eight, Romania thirty nine, Slovakia forty eight, and Croatia ranked sixtieth, and. Yeah. This year, Finland have had six wins and one draw. And among those six wins was 4-0 against Romania. Uh, they beat Slovakia twice, 1-0 and 2-0, and beat Croatia 4-1. Um, yeah. And when you look at the other teams, their form has been much more mixed. Um, Slovakia have, have one draw and four defeats this year. Um Romania, kind of three wins, two draws, one defeat, and Croatia, one win, two draws, two defeats. So we seem to be going in with some decent form, um, and decent form against these teams. So yeah, gives me some confidence that we've that that we've we've got a good chance to not only win these games, but but potentially to win this group and progress from this group by the uh, by the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, I would have to say I think um, I think League League B currently is probably the right level for us. But as you say, it will be interesting how we um, how we go from from that past those past results. You would you would think and you would hope that we are gonna are gonna do do well enough in this in this Nations League campaign and. Um, as you said, mate, at the top of the show, like with with the with the men's nations league, it really was the the blue touch paper that ignited the the revolution, really. So, um, so yeah, maybe maybe this this nations league will serve the same purpose for the Helmeret. I mean, it's um, it will be you know, getting those results, getting those wins on the board, especially in these sort of more competitive fixtures. Picking up those points can only breed confidence, especially among the younger players. And then, yeah, if we if we do manage to get promoted to uh, to one of the A leagues, it'll be um, it'll be nice to test ourselves against some of the bigger nations again. But but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, full of full of confidence for this one, mate. 
Yeah, just as a reminder, the, the, the fixtures are played in kind of like two two fixtures every month. So two fixtures in September, October, and then sort of right at the end of November into the beginning of December. Um, so we're starting in with the two games in September uh, at home to Slovakia on Friday, 22nd of September. That's a 6.30 kickoff local time at the Veritas Stadion in Turku. And four days later, Tuesday 26th, uh, away to Romania. That's also a, 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 a also it's a, it's a 7 p.m. kickoff again. Uh, that's finish time, I think. And uh, that's in Bucharest in Stadionul Alcul de Triumph. Well done. Um, I've also put links there. Both the games are being shown on Ule Cox and also yep. on Arena here in in Finland and uh, well everywhere around the world if you've got the right technology to to let you in. Um, this I, I mentioned before that the qualifying for this is aligned with other qualifying competitions, and I, I think this is really smart and joined up and grown up and very surprising because of all those all those things um <laughs> so basically after this competition is played uh the teams will be promoted relegated or whatever into what will be um well the, the next the next arrangement of all the qualifiers groups. Yeah. yeah but then those will be the groups that um or, or those will be the rankings and the seedings that form the qualification for the next yeah. Euros. And I think also the the top four, the winners of the top four groups from this go to the Olympics next year as well. So everything wow. is really, really connected. I mean, I, I stand yeah. to be corrected, but that's my that's my understanding. And and then of course next year there will be the Euro qualifiers with rankings based on what happens. The, at the end of this year and then I yep. assume that at the end of the Euros whatever the, the league positions are then will then form the next Nations League in two years time and then it will go on to the World Cup I think um, yeah. but it, it seems it seems like to make sense doesn't it like these all these things kind of connect and, and feed into the next one because your form now should be taken into account when it comes to next year's next year's competition so Indeed, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. God forbid FIFA and UEFA have finally got their act together. But it's, uh, yeah, to to have a bit of joined up thinking and to for these for these competitions to be to linked in that way. And um, yeah, and as you say, you're full to be considered when you're being uh, picked out of your various pots and mm. and and you know velvet bags or whatever it is for the for the next qualifiers. Yeah, it, it does make a bit of sense. But um, yeah, as I said, mate, I'm pretty. I've got, I've got to be pretty confident. I think, um, you know, I think it, we've we've run through the squad list there, but I think you know you could probably you could probably pick your your starting eleven out out of the squad, and I think it would be um, most people would would go with um, would go with the the most tried and tested players. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if uh, some of the some of the new recruits or the younger ones do get some minutes just to, as a as an experience if we manage to. You know, get get ahead in games and and bring them on for a bit of experience, or or you know, if um if indeed we need to bring them on to change it up, and mm. we're looking for young Orna to uh, to score after ten seconds again. But um, but yes, yeah, so it'll be it'll be good. I mean, um, just one side note. There's uh looking through that squad list. There's some of the girls are well, you know, deep into their seasons, and then you've got. Some of them who are playing, like in, 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 there's a few there now based in England. The WSL season is yet to start, you know. So, I mean, um, they've been they've been playing some pre-season friendlies and things like that. So they're they they're, they're, they're fit, you know. But it's um, yeah, as I say, they're, they're some of them are at different stages of the season. Mm. So maybe that'll have a, an impact. We we'll, we'll wait and see. So shall we shall we finish up by making some predictions? Why not? So, Finland versus Slovakia at home against Slovakia, who are ranked 48, so 20 places below. Me first? Go on, you go first. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for a 3 0 win to Finland. Would you like me to elaborate? 
Well, why not? If you've got something you want to say, I mean, I'm not going to hold you to specific goal scorers and minutes, but ah, you know, I don't think I don't think you could. Um, I don't think you never bet against Linda Salstrom. You know what I mean? I'm going to put Linda down for one, um, and then I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say Olga Artinen for one, and then I am going to go with Elipikuyamsa. They're my three goal scorers. And as you bothered to say it, I, I'm bothering to type it into our into our blog post oh, no. as we go. Now you're going to pick me up on <laughs> absolutely, yeah. The world needs this is a this is nothing if not a, a, a publication of record. Um, I'm going to go for two nil. I think Slovakia. The games have been score wise fairly close already this year. One nil and two nil. So I'm I'm going for another two nil win. Um. Away to Romania. I'll go. I'll go first this time. And yep. so Romania ranked thirty nine, closest to Finland, but we beat them four nil earlier this year in a friendly. It's away. I'm going for three one. Oof. To us, obviously. Big obviously. strong. Big strong. <laughs> We don't often go bet against ourselves, do we? It's a draw. No, if it. we can, if we can bear to say it, it might be a draw. That's it. What do you, what do you think? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go away in Romania. I think. Um, I think they might have. They might have taken a few lessons from that beating they had previously this year. So I think they're gonna try and try and tighten up a bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit more conservative than you. I'm gonna say two nil to us. Well, if if we're both predicting wins, and yeah, not many goals against. If if we're sitting here in a week or so's time, looking back at, at that, that'll be a, a splendid start to the campaign. Yeah, I mean uh, it certainly will. And yeah, like you say about no goals against, and I just I just think yeah, I just think that we're 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 in we're in half decent form. You know, I mentioned Anna Taminen. You know what I mean? She's been absolutely outstanding. I mean. I fully expect Tinya Rika Karpala to, to start these games. Um, you know, the, the the Italian season, I, I don't think um Tinny's not been not been first pick at Roma as yet. I think they did they just kick off their season a, a week or so ago. I think they recorded their first win of the season. But um but yeah, I mean I, Tinny or, or Anna, I'm I'm fully confident, mate. I mean, you know about my um, my love for goalies, so uh, so, so I can't I can't. Those those of you that are listening and not watching, Keke is again for second consecutive pod wearing his bright orange Finland goalkeeper shirt. So he's uh, yeah he's definitely there on uh, on Tinny's team. That's it. Not just that either. Look, look, wait for it. Oh, oh dear God! He's, you, you'll get us. You'll get us banned from all the video platforms. He's also got the, <laughs> the, the listener. He's also got the shorts and socks on. You don't want to miss it. Head over to YouTube. What, find what, the Finnish football show. What's uh, what's full kit bleep in Finnish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not so good with all the uh, with all the Finnish swear words, which is probably for the best. I think we'll, we'll yeah. leave it there. I think I, I, I think it begins with R and ends in Unkari or something like that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, you know uh, better than me. Yeah, for, you know, it's it, forty six year old geezer dressed up for a podcast in a full goalkeeper kit. It's um, yeah, but there we go. But no, uh, back to uh, back to the matter in hand. I'm yeah, I'm expecting some clean sheets, mate. Good stuff. I, I think I think the matter in hand is pretty much dealt with. Keke, thanks for uh, joining today, and we we'll get whatever permutation of Finnish football show uh, people, I suppose, the Finnish football yeah. show team together squad next members. week. The squad members, exactly, and um, and we'll look back at these games and and come back with a little bit more update on the Bakehouse Liga. But until then, thanks Definitely, for look thanks a lot, Keke. See you soon. Kiitos, nakemi. And listener, thanks a lot for joining us. Bye. You've been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and also on Instagram. See the links in the episode description. You can also connect with the five hosts on Twitter, at Explore Finland, 
at FC Sorby, at Escape to Sorby, at Kekimulari, and at Mano99. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.